Let's learn how to use Kahoot. Kahoot is a game-based learning platform that allows you to make interactive quizzes to test yourself as well as share with others. If you haven't done so already, you may need to sign up for Kahoot using the button here in the upper right-hand corner, or you may also log in if you already have an account. If you do need to sign up, eventually after a series of questions, you'll come to this page where it asks you to create an account. Instead of using an email and a password, I recommend continuing with Google by clicking this button here and choosing your Centennial ISD 12 Google account to log in with. By doing so, it'll be easier to log in later. I already have an account, so let me show you what that looks like and how to get started. Here on the main page in the upper right hand corner, there's a button that says create. That's what you're going to want to click to create your own Kahoot quiz. I've already started one here, so let's, let me show you the different parts that you're going to need to know. First and foremost, I like to click the settings in the upper part of the page to allow for a title and a description. I also might want to add a cover image, and you can add images from Kahoot's image library or upload your own. I also recommend changing your visibility settings from only you to everybody. That way others can use your Kahoot and learn from it, which we'll need to do later. This is where you create a Kahoot quiz question. Right here I'm on quiz question number one and I've already added a question. Questions typically go on the top. In the question area, you can bold and italicize words for emphasis, and you can also add subscript and superscript if you need to write chemical formulas and equations. In the middle, you can drag and drop images from your computer or choose from Kahoot's image library, upload an image, and you can even insert a YouTube link if you needed to have some type of external support. At the very bottom is a chance to add multiple choice answers. Typically, you're going to want to add one correct answer and three distractor answers. When you do choose an answer, make sure you select the appropriate answer, the one that's correct, by adding the green check mark. You can also change your question answers to images instead of text by clicking this button here. If you need to add another question, you can click Add Question button over here on the left-hand side. Here's my second question. Notice that this question has a little purple exclamation point that lets me know that I'm not quite completed with this question, and it's reminding me that I need to select one of the right answers below. On the right-hand side, I can change the question type. Typically, I could choose between quiz or true or false, but I should choose mostly quiz questions because that gives a better review of the material. I can also change the time limit for questions. Typically, it's better to give more time for questions that will require more effort. For example, this question requires them to do some calculations, so I'm going to give them some time in order to finish that. Now, where do we get quiz questions? How do we come up with quiz questions? I recommend you look at your unit portfolio. At the beginning of the unit, you obtained a portfolio document that had all of the learning objectives that you were going to be tested on for your unit exam. This is a wonderful document to review and to get ideas for quiz questions. In fact, you should have enough quiz questions to cover each and all of the learning objectives and all of its parts. For example, let's take a look at this learning objective for target 1.3. It says, I can model the relationship between the following variables of an ideal gas if all other variables are kept constant. Now, there are a lot of things going on here. I can make a lot of quiz questions using just the learning objective here at the top. But I can also get some ideas over on the left here, taking from the terms and definitions, as well as on the right, where I can see some models, diagrams, and examples. One thing to watch out for, I should really limit the types of questions that just rely on purely defining a concept, because those are very low-level questions, and not a lot of those are going to be asked on an actual exam. Another example would be taking some practice problems that we've done throughout the unit and reformatting them to fit in a different mode. For example, I might be able to steal this practice problem but change some of the numbers to different variables and solve for that and have have those doing my Kahoot quiz solve for that itself. When I'm done creating all of my quiz questions, and I should have a lot of quiz questions, then I'm going to come up here and click Done. It's going to remind me if I hadn't finished some of my quiz questions. For example, the one I forgot to check an answer, I'm going to go ahead and fix that now. After you click Done, it's going to give you this pop-up window. And this is a good idea to try some things, to test the Kahoot as well as play now. I'm going to go ahead and click Done. Your Kahoot, will, your Kahoot quiz will appear in your My Kahoot section 
inside your Kahoot account. It's a good idea now to make sure that it's visible to everybody. And if you need to change visibility settings, you can do so now. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to share this Kahoot with others. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. Now it's going to give me three options, host, challenge, and practice. The one that I'm going to share with others is practice because that allows them to do a single player session of Kahoot. So I'm going to click the practice button. That's going to open a practice in a new page, and I'm welcome to ch test this practice myself. But I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL here at the very top. And this is the URL that I'm going to go and paste inside my G account. So inside Schoology, this is the practice unit one exam review discussion, and I want others to be able to use my practice to help prepare for the test. So I'm going to come to my discussion and say, here is my Kahoot. And then I'm going to post that link right down here. Now others can use my Kahoot to practice for the exam. And you can as, as well explore others who may have other different types of practices, such as Kahoot's, flashcards, and other things. Good luck.